Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. We begin today talking about when or if to consider nutrient applications for your corn crop. Here's SUNUP's Curtis Hare with Dr. Brian Arnell. Well, as you can see behind me, it just keeps on raining. And Brian, this is a lot different than last summer shaked out to be. Absolutely, you know, our June had some moisture last year, but at the end of June, we shut off and, and it just stayed dry. So we got a little bit of soil, soil moisture. So right now we're, we're living the high life in some areas. I just was talking to Josh Lofton yesterday and looking at the Mesonet map. And to see that Kenton and the, the Panhandle has significantly more rain than Miami in the Northeast, kind of tells you the season we're yeah, in right, right now. But so yeah, the summer crops are really rolling. You're going to hear more about that from uh, Dr. Lofton here in a little bit. But corn for me, you know, we're we're kind of in a, a slow period as far as nutrient management goes. Corn corn is for the most part uh, done through the main part of the state as far as a lot of our nutrient management decisions. As you get in the Panhandle, uh, there's still some opportunity out there. So we're at a point out in the Panhandle where we're anywhere from a V10 to a tassel stage. And so at this point for those folks out there that are doing nitrogen management or thinking about doing things, I'd be looking at that last potential application of nitrogen either through the pivot or high clearance if you need some. Um, those soils out there though, especially after last year where we didn't have a lot of the greatest uh, yields out there, I'd be looking at my lower leaves. If I'm going into tassel or even post tassel and my lowest leaf is still green and gorgeous, I might lay off of that last shot and not really get too excited. But if I go in there and I'm finding some nitrogen deficiencies, any kind of stress whatsoever on that lower leaf, I'm going to want to make sure I put that nitrogen on to help finish because, man, the weather's perfect for the corn out there. We've had the cool days, cool nights, uh, plenty of rain, and that corn's just rolling. So what about soybean? So we look at our soybean crop around here and uh, it, it's moving along. Uh, I've seen some photos from folks around the state looking really good. We're really spread across as far as planting dates though. I mean, the rains and everything that we had to, to get around wheat harvest and early, it was dry and then it was wet. Our, our staging is just all over the board. And so what I would be watching out now, so we're, we're past anything you're really going to do planting. So what you watch out for now is I'd be watching very closely to mid canopy as we go from a vegetative stage into a reproductive stage, looking for yellowing of the leaf mid, mid crop. That's a sign that you have a potassium deficiency. And what we could be seeing in that is that we, while your soils may have enough potassium, we might have some root limiting uh, features this season, whether it's a compaction layer, or maybe it's a, it was planted a little bit wet and we have some uh, planter compaction, where we would see that mid season show up with yellowing. We've shown that you have capability to recover from that potassium stress if you just go out there with some potash, some 0060, and spread it across the top. But you want to know that you have that deficiency, so, so be scouting on the regular with the soybean crop, looking for that yellowing mid, mid, mid canopy, mid, mid crop, and it's going to be around the outer edge of the soybean uh, leaf. So wheat harvest is pretty much wrapped up in this state, and I know maybe that's the last thing producers want to think about is next year's crop, but you know, right now is probably a good time to kind of assess their fields and just kind of look ahead to some things that they can do for next year's crop, yeah. right? Absolutely. If we look at it, you know, the last couple of years for wheat's been 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 fun. Let's just say it that way, right? We, we've had a mixed bag of results the last couple of years when it comes to wheat. And we've also have a mixed bag of producers managing inputs the last couple of years. So it'd be, it's really important to go out right now or not right now, but when the fields start drying and start pulling soil samples, we want to make sure we know where we're at on P and K, but specifically pH. We've got soil moisture. If we can start getting the lime on the fields while we're in this bit of a wet cycle, that's going to help if we get that lime on get the moisture on there help it get incorporated so by the time we're planting again in September through uh, October we really got that pH better off that's both for conventional till and no till that soil test I said over and over again you're gonna make more money on that $10 soil test than you're gonna do about anything else on your operation alrighty thanks Brian Brian Arnell, OSU Extension Precision Nutrient Management Specialist here at Oklahoma State University. And if you'd like some more information about what Brian talked about, just go to our website, sunup.okstate.edu.